book by Taught Raw Gag Raw. This is going to be another episode on the 70 Torino. So follow me along through the intro, and I'll be back. So guys, at this point, we're like 13 days away from No Name Nationals, and I still have a card don't run. I have been busy in the background, and I didn't video any of the stuff I've done so far. But today, we're going to work along, see how far we can get, and hopefully, by the end of the weekend, we'll get this thing fired off. So we'll come in here Wednesday and set the motor in the car. I've been waiting on some parts to get everything hooked up, and in the meantime, I got all the EFI stuff bolted to the Cleveland, I extended some wires and moved some stuff around, took some things out. And we're at this point. The hydro hoses are just stuck on there. I just put the radiator hose on it. Put a fuel pump block off plate. I've got the headers on the car. Was not super impressed with those. Those are Flowtech brand. They fit the car great, but they don't fit the heads great. I had to do a bunch of grinding on them. Somebody can fit four barrel ports. Even though they are a four barrel header or advertised as one. Got the radiator back in. We got our pulley arrangement straightened out so at this point i'm ready to start kind of just bolting on some things trying to get some things straightened out we need to get that in the car so there's a ton of stuff to do today so instead of talking about it let's get to work at this point i got like i said i got the headers on there got flywheel on it pilot bearing put in there block plate all that stuff's on there i re-ran our starter wires back down here they're back down here so they get the clutch and the pressure plate on it get those things torqued down get the bell housing on it and tightened up then we can put the transmission back in so for a clutch this time, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I just ordered a disc, which is a McLeod performance disc, right there. This pressure plate came out of Dad's F100. It was built by a local clutch shop. It's supposed to have a lot better clamping force than a factory one. And I'm just going to use this stuff with his flywheel. And it should be more than enough for this old Cleveland. In reality, probably be lucky if this motor makes 350, 400 horsepower. So that clutch set up should be more than fine for it. We got old Daisy hanging out with me down here on the floor because she feels she needs to supervise and make sure things are right. Clutch is in, pressure plate's torqued, clutch centered up, so we're ready for the bell housing. We can go from there. We got the bell housing stuff in there. It wasn't easy with both the headers bolted on. Had to beat on this header some so it cleared the clutch fork. That's all the way released. Now they got a towel shoved behind there, just hold the throw out bearing centered up there. But super tight. These Flowtech headers for Cleveland will not work with factory manual transmission because your Z-bar will come right down through here and pushes in this side. So everything's right in the way for that. On a side note, it's going to be tight on the starter too up in there. So hopefully my starter will fit. I'm getting real tired of this jump parts that you get nowadays. Like, I bought these because they were cheaper. Because the last set of $700 hooker headers I bought, I had to cut two tubes off and move them. Uh, these, yeah. 
If you had a C4, they probably fit fine. C6, they're not going to fit either. Uh, they're just way too tight to the bell housing. They'll be all in your transmission pan. So, yeah. Well, it's like four hours later, and just not got transmission done. Uh, moral story here is it followed till the mortal end. So, I walk in her car, I'll show you what it got done. And probably gonna cut it off for today, even though it's seems short for y'all. It's been a it's been a day for me fighting with this transmission in this car. For whatever reason, even though all the stuff pretty much was the same stuff come off of it, it didn't want to go back together. Dry shaft back in it. Transmission, transmission cross member, slave cylinder for the clutch is back in there. Uh, it's super tight up there with them headers up there in the front, and I bent them a little bit for that. And probably gonna have to make a heat shield for that slave cylinder. I got the starter up in it. It's it's tied around it too. It's probably gonna need some kind of heat shield. But pretty much the bottom side stuff is wrapped up other than rigging up some kind of exhaust. So it means I'm just gonna have to work three times as hard tomorrow. Try to get the rest of this stuff hashed out. Uh, I'm not getting in a hurry, but I am in a hurry. Like I said, we're like 14, 13 days away at this point, so I think I'm about ready to call it a day for day. Come back in the morning for a fresh start and try to get some more stuff wrapped up. Well, it's the next day and I better get busy. Daisy is doing cat things again. So I got like 12 days at this point. I better get busy because I got a pile of parts. We need to get them on the car. So let's start doing that. So a lot of you may be wondering, why are you taking the valve cover back off? Why didn't you do it before you put the motor in the car? Because I was waiting on parts. So, I ordered a new set of rocker arms and a set of push rods. And I got some valve cover studs, put valve covers, because these bolts are too short. So, I'm going to get those put on there so I can get the heater hoses buttoned up. We can get the distributor dropped in. And all that other fun stuff that it takes for a car to run. I'm not real far off, but in hindsight, I'm a mile away with about seven miles to run. So. Get these rocker arms on here, and then we'll go. Well, got my rocker arms and push rods here. I usually don't like comp cam stuff nowadays because it's usually made in China. But got them ready to go on. Got our push rods. So all we gotta do is get them on the car down there. Well, one side down, one go. Now I'm gonna run back through the valves one more time just to make sure after I spend over quite a bit, just to make sure everything stays consistent. I got all the rocker arms on, all the valves adjusted. Went over them twice just to make sure everything was all right. I got to look for Daisy and I couldn't find her. She is over here doing cat stuff. Yeah. I figured she was close. She don't ever go very far. So I got the motor on top dead center. Let's pull this distributor out of there and get our new one ready. All right, what I got here is a Summit distributor. So the part numbers are up here for Ford v 8 But this one right here is this one. Fits 351 Cleveland through 429 460. That is because of the distributor gear diameter. Is the only reason why you can't use a 351 Windsor distributor in. 
So I go to the distributor. It looks like a pretty nice piece. Looks like a clone of an MSD. Uh, important thing here is the reason why I'm changing the distributor. I didn't know what gear was on this one. Well, I know the Summit one's got an iron distributor gear, so I ordered this melanized gear right here from Summit. And this melanized gear should be compatible with all camshafts. So I got to change the distributor gear. It was ordered for this shaft size. And we got to go in here and we got to lock out the me advanced mechanism. So these are set up about like a Chevrolet distributor. So they use this big roller button here. And all our advanced mechanism should be straight underneath it. Like so. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to consult the instructions here. I've had to lock this out. It should say uh, how to lock it out. Remove springs, weights, and advanced stop bushings. Remove roll pins from drive gear and retainer collars. Okay, so all I gotta do, since I'm gonna change the gear anyway, is I take this stuff off, I'm gonna rotate this, and it'll lock it out. But the best way I found is take a drill bit about the same size as your roll pin, and just be gentle. And you knock your roll pin right out. So, Get the pins out of both those, we should be able to, I know the distributor gear generally don't slide off, but this one will. So we got a shim and a collar down here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna set these here to the side. So it's got a little stop bushing right here. I went and took the distributor all the way apart and took the shaft out of it just where I could See how well it was actually made. So far, I don't see anything that scares me about it. It's a pretty nice little unit. So, a little nut on it is a metric, of course, which I don't really care for, but there's a little hole right here, 180 degrees from the slot, and you just drop that distributor back down in there or the shaft back down in there, from what I understand, and you tighten this nut back up. Could just weld it, but at least this gives us an option later if we ditch the EFI stuff, and go back to a carburetor, I can at least put an MSD box back on it, and be able to have an advanced curve if so desired. So, got that little dude tightened up and our advance is locked out. The distributor itself is pretty nice. Looks like it's got bronze bushings in it. Got a bronze bushing up here at the top and a shim for your magnetic pickup. Which just like the MSD distributors, it uses like a Dura Spark pickup in it, just with the MSD plug. So, get that back together. We just need to put our shim and our stop collar back on there with its appropriate roll pin. So I'll have to move y'all to knock this in there with the vise, but pretty straightforward. Just gonna knock our stop collar back in there like that, and I'll put our new gear on. So I got our new melanized gear on there. Here is our old iron gear. So, when you install this, this one does fit a little tighter than the Summit one did. I tapped it on there lightly with a deep well socket. When you get in there, you will have to drill one side of this gear through. So make sure you don't drill it any larger diameter than the hole already was. That way your roll pin's not loose. So I drilled it through with an eighth inch drill bit, tapped the roll pin back in. We got our collar roll pin back on. 
So this is the distributor's ready to go back in the car. So I got her motor at top dead center. So we just want to drop our distributor in facing the number one cylinder, which on the forward is straight back. So that was pretty simple there. Now all I gotta do is change our connectors so they match the one to my current module. And the valve covers are bolted down. I put some studs in them. I don't care for these old black rubber gaskets, but they're all I got and all I can get. So we're gonna have to run them and see what happens. So at this point, we're ready for plug wires. I need to hook that distributor up. I need to put the heater hoses on it. We should be getting fairly close. And by fairly close, I mean, we still gotta do exhaust. We still gotta address the fuel line situation. I got some braided dash eight line to replace my push lock lines. Uh, just a fair warning guys, if you buy a Holly sniper kit or one of them fuel high techs or any of these other TBI systems, they come with push lock lines supplied. If you go to an NHRA, AHRA, IHRA track that does tech, those aren't going to pass. So I'm going to their house, so I'm not going to complain about it. So I got to change these fuel lines too. So. I'm gonna get the plug wires on it and uh, heater hoses, and then we'll go from there. Well, I got the plug wires on there. I'm not real happy I had to run one and five around the front because the valve covers are just so tall that you can't really, you know, get them over. So I'm just gonna have to run like that for now. We're in the time crunch, and these are plug wires I got. I had to rub one off six cylinder for coal wire. Cause the cold wire wasn't long enough. Uh, probably should have got set for a 460 instead of a 351 Windsor, but these big old tall valve covers are most of the evil here. Other than that, they fit pretty good. These are just a replacement set of NGK wires. Uh, I do like them a lot better than the 90 degree boots on them MSD wires. Cause the 90 degree don't really clear on a Ford motor because of the way the plugs are. So at this point, I need to get that distributor wired up and I can go from there. Now it's time to start dressing the fuel lines. I swapped the fittings from the back to the front because it'll be our shortest run to our regulator. Our return line runs down up under the car, up under here to a hard line. So I'm gonna take it loose down at the bottom probably gonna have to drain the tank in this thing hopefully it don't have too much fuel in it I didn't put very much before that track trip so only about 10 gallons and I drove it to the track so it probably got at least 10 in it considering what was still in the tank so so we can get this thing drained so I've been dreading changing fuel lines because I didn't want to drain the tank Moral story here is I usually keep my stuff full. And for whatever reason, I knew I was going to drain this one, so I didn't fill it up. But I was hoping to get some more track passes out of it and drive it back home to get it low enough. So let me see if I can find some cans. I'll bust this thing loose back here in the tank, drain this fuel out, and we'll see where we end up. Well, this is the fun stuff. So five gallons out. Our second five gallon container now, and I've got a third one just in case. But I get to replace all these fuel lines all the way up to my hard line, and then from my hard line in the front up to the regulator. So, lots, lots of fuel. And on our third one, hope I don't need a fourth one.
It's still coming out at Mach 5 out of that hose, so we'll see. And right as that can was up to the top, it stopped. So got 15 gallons of fuel out of it, which means this thing didn't hardly burn no fuel driving it to the track 45 minutes away and making one pass. So I'm sure at Cleveland will get wonderful fuel mileage. So these rear hoses will be easy. They'll be exact same length as the ones I take off the car. So I'm gonna start with the return line where it meets up to the hard line up there. So let's get to making some hoses. I got a 25 foot roll of dash eight braided. I got a box full of fittings over there to the side. Got a roll of electrical tape. My cut off wheel that I've been using on the 65 Mustang. A socket that fits tightly on these AN fittings. And some WD-40. These are the things that make it easy to make an AN line. So I'm gonna start with the end that been cut first because I won't have to tape it up or anything. I can just put the fitting on it. Then I'll show you how to cut the line and we'll go from there. So guys, this is our pre-cut end. It's cut nice. And a lot of where the struggle is with this AN line is getting this line on there or nut on there. So you want to get the tightest sockets you can get that fit your AN fitting. In this case, these fittings are seven and eight. So twenty-two millimeter is the tightest fit. And you can take and just twist that right on there with a socket and a little impact till it's bottomed out. And from there, just gonna spray a little WD-40 in here. And then it's as simple as tightening down or fitting. I'll have to go get some wrenches, but you get the idea, right? The socket makes this a lot easier. And if you're worried about scratching this stuff up, feel free to use AN wrenches and fight with the line. But that's how I do it. So now we know these lines are gonna have to be the exact same length or within a reason of being the exact same length. And we know we got a compression style fitting at the end. So what I'm gonna do is take Right here approximately where my line ends up. And I'm going to take some electrical tape and I'm going to wrap this tightly here. Just a couple rounds. And that's going to give us our cut line. So from our fitting there to our fitting here. And you add the height of the compression. It'll give us a line about this long. So now I'm going to check this up in the vise. When I say check it up in the vise, I don't mean hard where you collapse the line, but just enough to kind of hold it and, and wiggle like this wooden table. So I'm going to hold this line up here. I'm going to take my cutoff wheel. I'm going to cut it in the electrical tape there, and I'll be back. And what that does is still gives us a somewhat clean line so we can get... Are fitting on there. The impact makes this a ton easier. We'll spray our fitting with some WD-40 and our hose in there. I'm just going to go in there and repeat our tightening process. And after you get to this point, 
you need to flush your hose out with either some degreaser and water or some brake cleaner and an air hose. But this line is now ready to put back on the car. Yeah, hopefully it helps somebody out. That's literally the easiest way to do it. Or at least I've found. Uh, personally, I just don't like braided hoses. I don't like the way they look. Uh, especially on a classic car. They're kind of gaudy. So, we get them on there. I'm going to continue making hoses until we get up under the hood and then I'll be back. Pretty much, I'm just going to do the same thing I showed you. Repeated times like 10. We got a big old pile of fuel lines. And I got all the stuff on the car. I still got to connect it back to the sump. Back here in the back, but got everything replaced. There's literally a six inch six and a push lock left on the car. So I'm out of fitting, so we're just going to have to run like that. That runs down there to the hard line on the frame rail. Straight up through here to our throttle body. So hopefully that'll be good enough. So I'll get lift loose, connect it back to the sump. So I guess I'm gonna work on the exhaust because I do need to get no two sensor in it before I even try to fire it up. And hopefully we can get this thing started soon. Well, it's time to get the exhaust mocked up. And fortunately, most of the time on a, one of these cars, you can just run a straight piece of pipe back. So that's what I'm going to do. Get a piece of three, two th sticks of three inch pipe here. Got them stuck in the collector flanges up there. And I'll weld them in or spot weld them. And then I'll start trying to mock up my mufflers back here and where I'm going to put the O2 sensor. Well, it's another day and Daisy's doing her morning checklist. Just make sure everything's all right. And I'm having motivational problems this morning, I guess. Got a lot of stuff to do. We're real close to the end here. We just got a bunch of small stuff to finish up. I need to get fuel back in the car. I need to get the exhaust finished up. And then maybe we can try to fire this thing off, which also got to rewrite the tune. So hopefully everything goes well. mocked up I had to jump from my three to three and a half air so it's gonna be kind of ugly in these areas but I had these mufflers and saves me some money at this point and that's what we're going to use so now I need to pull this exhaust off here so I can close that gap up up there and get these welded up get our O2 sensor bunny head to the driver's side and get our passenger side all welded up also and yes it's ugly uh, had them three and a half inch mufflers i'm going to use them if not they're just going to sit in my garage and rot to the ground um, didn't have enough three and a half inch pipe to run all the way back from the headers back so we're going to run three inch into these three and a half inch mufflers and uh that's just the way it's going to have to be so let me get this stuff pulled off here get this o2 added in get everything welded up and then we can wrap this exhaust mess up and maybe we can get the parking brake cable hooked back up. And from that point, we won't be long from starting this thing. I got the exhaust all buttoned up. Yes, it's not pretty. I know I don't care. I got my parking brake run. Got my hook there. Got it through here. I left this loose so I can adjust it. I made a little heat shield for the slave cylinder. Got my clutch return spring back on there. Got my wideband O2 sensor in. That's why I ended up putting these copper gaskets in here with a little sealer. But 
we should be ready to hook this parking brake up. And yes, I know I don't need parking brake for it to run. But I want to get all the stuff wrapped up under the car. That way when I set this thing on the ground, I don't have to pick it back up again. So let me get to it. Well, I've been going over stuff just to make sure everything's reading on the ECM. I got a rough tune kind of hashed into it. I've not tried to start it other than a little burble here or there. Uh, just to make sure all my ignition stuff's still hooked up correctly and in the right phase. So I think we're at the point where we can start this and see if it'll run. I got my timing light hooked up just in case I need it. Just in case it don't run. So let's try it. may not be as big as what dad was told it was it wants to idle about 960 rpm so for a can that's in the high 240s low 250s and advertised duration or at 50,000 duration this thing should be idling about 1200 uh, the efi smooths everything up but now that i've got a heat cycle in it i'm gonna let it cool down i'm gonna recheck all the header bolts i'm gonna put it back on the rack lift it up make sure i don't have no leaks and just give it a general once over. And I'll probably start putting my grill back in. That way I'm prepared to get my hood back on. And tidy up some of this other little small stuff that, you know, needs to be tidied up. Well, I got the grill back in. I got the air cleaner on there. Everything looked kind of okay. I got my shift boot and shifter knob and all that good stuff back, back installed in there. So... One thing I got left to do is uh, switch uh, my shift light over to eight cylinder mode and my tack back to eight cylinder mode. So let's get to that, I guess. Well, there's a snowball's chance I might not be here dark today. So we'll see what happens. Well, I drove it around a little loop here at the shop a few times. Clutch feels good. Everything seems okay. Uh, went ahead and added my catch cam back. Not real happy with how I had to do that, but it works. Another one that's run down. Put the catch cam back where I had it. So Just need to pick up a few things here. And the big thing I need to do is put some miles on it. 
So I'm debating at this point if it's worth me trying to drive a, a car across town that I literally just started today and moved around the little leaf here shop three or four times. See if it's worth uh, taking off on that 20 minute drive home. I think it'll be all right, but you never know. I'll have to wait to put the hood on it until I have some help. So, either way, if I'm going to go track Tuesday, I need to put as many miles on as I can today and tomorrow. So, no better time than now, I guess. Well, I made it home. I broke down four times on the way home. Some of it's my fault. Some of it is just weird stuff that happened. Uh, the fuel pump wire that's in the sister spot fuse box that's actually soldered into an old fuse. It just decided to fall out randomly. Nothing's been touched. Nothing's been messed with. The ignition module, which hasn't been unbolted from the firewall, decided to loosen itself up and lose ground, which means you lose ignition which means you lose fuel injector pulse. So, I finally got it home. And here I am. I'm down here in the driveway trying to address some of these small things. So I can move it around and put it in the garage tonight because I don't have a hood on it. So, I better get busy. So, this module right there, that bracket, it lost its ground. And this has been a Big bunch of joy of fun. Had a little oil leak back here. I changed oil pressure sensor or oil pressure line fittings back there. Hopefully that'll stop that. I better climb under the dash and get that straightened out. <laughs> that's gonna bring us to the end of this video if you haven't yet make sure you hit that like button on this video comment down below share it with your friends if you're not a subscriber hit that subscribe button it helps me bring you more videos like this if you are a subscriber i greatly appreciate you guys so until the next video thanks for watching and i'll see you at the next one